Omar Abdul Fattah of Ask a Muslim Facebook page, which has 1.5 million Facebook followers now, and Abdullah Gondal discuss on how the Quran gets the big bang wrong. Is it possible to reconcile this ancient text with modern science? Or is it a fool's game? You be the judge. In regards to 2130, um, so when I, I, I guess I haven't really thought about how, how my thoughts have changed about that verse uh, in too long, but uh, the verse says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ أَفَلَوْ أَفَلَمْ يَرَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَنَّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ كَانَ تَرَطْقًا فَفَطَقْنَاهُمَا have those who not disbelieved consider that the heavens and the earth were once a joined entity and then we caused them to and we split them asunder. Um, so I think that, I mean, that that seems to me now as I think about it like rationally and logically, it seems to be quite in line with scientific, their scientific understanding of how the universe was was made in, in the sense that there was everything was kind of one at a point and then things were split asunder. What the cause is, obviously there's differences of opinions about, but things were once, everything was one and then there was a, split uh and now the universe continues to expand at a fairly rapid rate um so that's kind of how i see that um, i hope that okay. answers the question yeah okay well i mean when you actually look at the verse 2130 uh it says that the earth was split uh, from the heavens like uh, it mentions the word Ard. so it also is then it could be used to imply that the earth was existing at the time of the big bang whereas we now know that the earth came into mm -hmm. existence billions of years later right so there's that part and so that's what i'm trying to say like it kind of projects modern science tries to fit and mold it into what we can mm -hmm. understand kind of what we call confirmation bias but what's also interesting is if if you look at the mythologies of the past they also echo the same kind of creation myth uh, if i remember like the sumerians had this one and uh, the romans and the greeks or the there's this tribe the karachi of africa there's a tribe too uh, and even the, the separation myth of the Chinese are, was also similar to this, that the heavens and the earth were joined together and then split asunder. And they go into more detail where, you know, it's all water. And then the Quran also echoes a little bit of that, I think, in Surah Hud, verse 7 it is, where Allah's throne was floating upon the water before the universe existed. So, you know, uh, so w when you think about it, like, it's not anything unique the Quran is saying, and it's not really precise in its terminology, you know. It's saying that the earth and the heavens were joined together. Okay, then what do you mean by the heavens? And then what do you mean by the earth? Are you saying all of matter was joined together? So there's a lot of ambiguity in the words, right? Yeah. So these kind of issues uh, pop up in my head. And that's why I don't buy into the claims of you know projecting these verses as scientific miracles in any sense. Yeah. Um, for example, like if 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 you follow from that, if you look at Surah Fusilat, I believe uh, Surah 41 between verses 9 and 12, when it mentions the chronology of how everything was created, mm. it says that the earth was created first and then the stars were put in the sky. It got the mm -hmm. creation mm -hmm. chronology wrong. Mm. So here you have the Quran in conflict with modern science in, in ways that can't be reconciled. So what's your view on that? Well, from my understanding, there's two verses. Uh, there's chapter 79 and then uh, in Surah Al-Nazi'at where um, Allah talks about how the ordering and in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah also talks about the, the ordering as well. And so how it, it can be reconciled, I think, fairly fairly easily. But before going into that, I would just say that you know, when it comes to modern science and, you know, we say things like 5.6 billion years ago and then, and then the earth came in and then the universe came in, I would say these are, uh, these are two, are, these are basically guesstimates, right? And they may be based on logic, but it's not like we observed when these happened, right? We're going by our best assumption of how things worked, right? So, and that's, that's why I don't think a rash, like, I don't think a logical approach to, to science is to say that this is definitely the truth. But this is how we perceive the truth today based on what we know, right? Because science is constantly changing. Science is constantly changing. Um, okay. In regards to these verses, I would say that the Quran says, uh, It helps me when I remember the Arabic first and then I translate it. Um, mm. So he created everything on the earth altogether, and then he he went to the heavens and he created Sabah Samawat. Now the verses in Surah Al-Naziat, they say, 
uh, they say that Allah created created the the was it the basically where the co apparent contradiction appears is when Allah says um, والأرض بعد ذلك طحاها right and after that Allah spread the earth He spread the earth وأخرج منها ماءها ومرعها so people say well here it says that uh, the earth came second but here it says that the earth came first the earth did come first and then the heavens were created and then Allah split I guess he spread the earth and then water emerged and then that's when everything came out in or uh, water came out um, in regards to the scientific inaccuracy I would just say that I mean I, I personally don't I don't take what science says today as 100% being absolute because if we read for example Darwin's um, Darwin's book we can talk about evolution later but if we read Darwin's book even Darwin didn't really have a full understanding of how you know inheritance works like he thought there was a process of pangenesis, I, I believe he called it, and where gemules were transferred from one thing, one thing to another. But we didn't really know how inheritance worked until Mandel's, uh, Mandel's tea, pl uh, tea plant experiments. So I would just say that, I, I wouldn't say, here's what science says, so that means the Quran must be wrong. I would, uh, the way I look at it, and this is my personal opinion, is that this is what science says today, and science goes through these constant paradigm shifts, and potentially what science says today will, will, will not be uh, what science says tomorrow. And we've seen that in the past. So. Okay. Well, well there's, there's a distinction I want to make here before we go sure. forward. Was yeah. the hypotheses change? Theories mm. might tinker a little bit, but mm. concrete facts don't change. You're not going to have science suddenly say that the earth uh, is not a sphere. It's flat or it's square all of a sudden. Like, those facts will stay there. Mm. I mean, mm. We know from how the universe functions it's the fact that you know first like early universe didn't have any stars and the matter coalesced and then stars were formed and the nuclear fission happened and then around those stars debris collected and then the planets came by and i mean everybody knows this stars evolved way before planets you know so i i honestly see this like as a as a contradiction in modern with modern science where it's just standing in conflict saying that the earth was created first and then the heavens were created and then the star the have nearest heaven was adorned with stars and i think that's what it's right. uh, let me read surah fusilat uh, so I mean, i'm using my phone right now so i can't look up the eyes okay, so I'm gonna, okay. I'm, i can check them afterwards but yeah. um so it says in 4110 uh 41 9 sorry uh say those who disbelieve he created the earth in two days and then in the next verse, it says that uh, he gave the sustenance and created the, the creatures and everything in the earth. Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to the earth, come willingly or by compulsion. And they came willingly. And then he completed them as seven heavens. And then he adorned the nearest heaven with lamps as protection. And... Uh, we'll get into the stars being protections and lamps a little later. But this is like in conflict with modern science. So you would rather take the Quranic uh, cosmological claim over uh, the cosmology of science completely here? Well, what I would say is I would, I would first analyze both because obviously an English translation is not 100%. Uh, I've never seen an English translation. I've seen some that are very close, but I'd have to look at the actual Arabic itself before I can make that conclusion. Hmm. And then I have to look at what modern science says about it. Um, but I would just, I personally don't see things like because if we look at, for example, like Google, when was the earth created? If you type that in, you'll see it gives you a range. And there's like a variation of like, let's say, 4 billion years, which is a lot, a long, long, long time, right? So I would personally point, say, huh? yeah, yeah, three points. Well, my point is there's still some variation, right? So it's not something that we've directly observed. We're making our best guess of it. And we have to realize that at one point, people thought that the universe was, was eternal, right? And there was the, 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 the idea that the universe was uh, not in, not expanding or, or still. So my, I guess the way I see it is in my point in my life, after kind of putting the Quran through a scrutinous, like quite fairly scrutinized test and seeing kind of like, okay, what does this book say? And just seeing over and over again, this is just my experience, seeing the Quran over and over again, being reaffirmed through my tests, I've come to realize that, you know, it doesn't really matter uh, what modern theories say about things that we can't directly observe. I would personally rather take the Quran over after okay. after putting it through this scrutinized test. Okay, okay. I mean, we have evidence, like we can use carbon dating and uh, of fluorine but dating, all sorts of dating. You can still approximate it into a very close range. We're not saying that it was created like 13 billion years ago alongside the Big Bang, like the Quran seems to propagate. Uh, it was definitely created after. I mean, do you agree with that part at least? 
to be honest with you, I haven't studied this in in as much detail to okay. to okay. say that to they say that the Earth was definitely created after the universe. But I don't I I don't see how we can be so definite about such a thing that happened so long ago. I mean, we have lots of different evidence, but I want to be stuck yeah. on this this topic specifically now. Sure. Thanks for watching this clip. If you like this content, please consider supporting the channel. I have about 30 monthly supporters and I would like to get this number to at least 100. This will help me spend more time on this project. Details are below. Thank you so much. This is Abdullah Samir signing out.